Hello guys, so um, from today on, we will be starting uh, organic chemistry for chapter 2 where we are going to learn about uh, hydrocarbons, okay? So uh, let's have a look at the content of the this chapter's lesson. So we are going to learn nomenclature, isomerism, physical properties of alkane, uh, chemical properties of alkane, sources of hydrocarbon and its effect of environment, uh, nomenclature of isomerism and physical properties of alkene, chemical properties of alkene and industrial applications of alkene and throughout the past questions so this is quite a hot topic especially uh, in the few recent semester yeah okay so organization let's have entered the lesson so uh, hydrocarbon are categorized based on their bonding as shown in the table below so alkene has only single bond uh, a hydrocarbon with a carbon carbon double bond is an alkene so if uh, it has a triple bond then it is an alkyne <coughs> So hydrocarbon with aromatic compounds is called as aromatic hydrocarbon. So a hydrocarbon with no double or triple bond is to say a saturated hydrocarbon because it has a maximum number of bonded hydrogen. Another way to describe alkene is then classified as saturated hydrocarbon. Okay, so here are the different classes of the hydrocarbon. We have alkene, alkene, alkyne, and aromatic compounds. Okay, okay so uh, with that session, let's focus on the alkene. So an alkene is a hydrocarbon containing only single bond. So the alkene are to say the simplest and least reactive class of organic compound because they contain only hydrogen and sp3 hybridized carbon and have no reactive functioning group. So an alkene contains no double or triple bond and no hetero atoms. They are poor acid and bases. They are also poor electrophile and nucleophile as well. So although alkene undergoes reactions such as cracking process and combustion at high temperature. So these are a few examples of the uh, alkenes that we see here. Uh, Okay. okay, so uh, let's have a look at the nomenclature and the physical properties of alkene. So alkenes are hydrocarbon that contain only pi, uh, sigma bond in between CC. Homologous of alkene has the same general formula expressed as CnH2n plus 2 and all of them will end with the word "-ain". So they have the same chemical properties as the, and their physical properties progress with the number of carbon including the melting point, boiling point and etc. Okay? So showing you to you in here are the examples of a few basic alkene. Huh? So the next slide is going to show you more about the alkene. So we have if one carbon, uh, you have a suffix meth, so methane, two carbon, ethane, three carbon, propane, four carbon, butane, five carbon, pentane, six carbon, hexane, seven carbon, heptane, and eight carbon, octane. So these are the structural formula of the organic compounds involved, and this is their molecular formula as summarized based on their structural formula. So uh, you can see that this is how uh, saturated hydrocarbons they look like. They contain only C and H inside them. Okay, so with that transition, let's learn how to name an alkene. So these are the four steps of how to name an alkene. Yeah? Okay, the first step is to find the parent chain of the molecule, one with the greatest number of the carbon in it, and name the parent chain according to the um, number of carbon. So identify the substituent inside the parent chain. So uh, inside here, we only focus on the LQ. So we have a CH3, it is methyl, CH2, CH3, uh, ethyl. Uh, CH2, CH2, CH3 is propyl and then you can also have CH, CH3, 2 is isopropyl third butyl is C, CH3, 3 and then isobutyl is CH2, CH, uh, CH3, 2 and if there are more than one type substituent uh, they are arranged accordingly to alphabetical order Third step is, if there are two or more similar substituents, a prefix is placed according to the number of similar substituents. So if two similar substituents die, three similar substituents try, four similar substituents tetra, five penta, and six hexa. And finally, place the number of the substituent in the parent chain. So usually the smallest number of carbon is preferred. So to separate between the number and number, you use a comma, while between number and alphabet, you use a dash. So for example, um, if you have x, 3, y, you separate like this, uh, number and number, you separate by 2, 4, for example. Okay, let's have a look at uh, how to name based on the four step that we show. Huh? Okay, so first step is find the longest chain. So in here, the longest chain is a 6 carbon. So 6 carbon in here, we call it as a hexane. Okay, then find the substituted, uh, find the substituent in the parent chain. So the one which is not attached to the parent chain. So these are all branches. So this is an ethyl. Then you have methyl and methyl. 
since you have Matthew and Etiu, so uh, based on the alphabetical order, so E first followed by M, therefore you have Etiu then Matthew. Then third step is two similar substituents. In here we have two similar. Uh, in here we have two similar uh, RQ here, which is a Matthew. So we put a die in front of the Matthew here. And finally, based on the number, now you have to look at two directions. Huh? So you have to look read from left to right or right to left. So if this is left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it becomes three etil, three four dimethyl. However, if you read from the other way around, uh, this is one, two, three, four, uh, five, and six. So it becomes four etil, three four dimethyl. So which one is better? Definitely, it is 3 ethyl, 3, 4 dimethyl hexane. Then, uh, if you are given in the condensed formula, which is for, let's say, this one, uh, so you must first expand the molecule. So after you expand the molecule, the molecule will be such as like this. Okay, so your first step is you find the parent chain. So the parent chain here is 5 carbon. So 5 carbon, we call it as a pen, uh, 5 carbon in here, we call it as a pentane. Then we find the alkyl substituent. So this is a, a methyl, this is a ethyl, this is a ethyl. So as usual, we have methyl and ethyl. So according to alphabetical order, E first, then come M. So since in here you have two methyl, you have one ethyl, you have two ethyl. So in the ethyl here, we put a dye. And finally, for the numbering, if you read from left to right, it is 3, uh, three, three diethyl, or you have a smaller, mm, wait, 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 mm. in here, if you read, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, and then if you read from right to left, uh, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it will be 3, 3 diethyl, instead of 4, a smaller one is 2, uh, so 2 methyl is better. Okay, 3 3 diethyl, 2 methyl pentane. Okay, so this is how we name uh, this one. Uh. So let's have a look at another example which is by using the uh, skeletal. So this is a uh, skeletal. So you have to find the longest carbon. So the longest carbon in here is 7 if you calculate. So uh, one edge is one carbon as we, we learned uh, previously in chapter 1. Uh. So 7 carbon, so therefore heptane. Okay, then you have to find the alkyl. So um, this, is a this is isopropyl. This is a methyl and this is an ethyl. Okay, so uh, according to alphabetical order, uh, you shall have uh, met, uh, M E I. So ethyl first, followed by isopropyl, then methyl. Since there are two similar methyls, so we put the prefix di. And um, according to the number, uh, it's very easy to tell. So uh, all you have to read is read from right to left. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So it become uh, four ethyl, five isopro. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Two direction. Okay. Uh, in, in here we have another direction. Okay. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So if you read from left to right, it will be four ethyl, three isopropyl, five, five dimethyl. But then, if you read from the right, uh, left to the right, it will be four ethyl, five isopropyl, three three dimethyl. Of course, uh, if you compare four three five five to four five three three, which one is better? Definitely is four five three three. So the full name for this compound is four ethyl one five isopropyl three three dimethyl heptane. So this is how we name the uh, alkene. Okay. Okay, so finish about the naming. So let's immediately go to the isomerase. Uh, this one. Uh. Alkane can also present in the form of cycloalkane, where each C is bonded covalently in a ring form. So in cycloalkane, it must have a minimum 3 carbon in order to form a cyclostructure. So cycloalkane has a general formula of CNH2N. Okay, so for example, if you have cyclopropane, so in terms of display formula, this is how it looks like, and skeletal, this is how it looks like. Now, always remember, for each skeletal, uh, each edge in here has two hydrogen as shown to you in the display formula. So the number of H will not be shown in the skeletal, so student, you have to be careful. Uh. Okay, then if you have four carbon, it will become cyclopropane, five carbon, it will become cyclopentane, and six carbon, it will become cyclo. 
exit. Okay, when cycloalkane has only one substituent in the structure, the name of the cycloalkane is only added by the name of substituent. For example, if you have only a CH3, so it's called as a methyl cyclobutane. If you have a ethyl in here, so ethyl cyclobutane. And if you, this one has an isopropyl, so isopropyl cyclohexane. So note that they are non, uh, not named as one methyl or one ethyl or one isopropyl because um, when they that is the only substituent inside the ring definitely they will be number one okay however if there are more than two, two or more substituent okay they will start with the uh, carbon with the substituent that is first in alphabet number in the direction that gives the next substituent to the lowest possible so when there are three or more begin the substituent that lead to the lowest set number okay so for example if you have oh so this one will become the functioning group lah. so this is a methyl so two methyl cyclohexanol so if this is a methyl, this is an ethyl, so instead of naming 3 methyl, uh, three ethyl, 1 methyl, so we name as 1 ethyl, 3 methyl. So note that start from the carbon substituent that is first in the alphabet, so we prioritize the alphabet, because in this case it's either 1, 3 or 3, 1, so uh, 1, 3 is better. And then if you have the next one, so you have 4 chloro, 2 ethyl, 1 methyl cyclohexane, uh, this will give the smallest set number, lah, okay? Okay, so this is some of the examples of how we name a cycloalkane. Okay. Okay, then we are going to continue with isomerisms in alkane. So alkane usually exhibit constitutional or structural isomerism as it can form in many structures. So to understand how the constitutional isomerism of alkane, so let's study the isomers present in uh, pentane and hexane. So in pentane C5H12, you have how many isomer? As you all know, there are three, namely as N pentane. This is a 2-methyl butane, and this is a 2-2-dimethyl propane. If you have 6-carbon, then you have 5-isomer. You have hexane, 2-methyl pentane, 3-methyl pentane, 2-2-dimethyl butane, and 2-3-dimethyl butane. So before we end uh, our first clip in here, why don't you try to identify uh, in which term that, uh, whether there is any optical isomerisms or not. If you look very carefully, none of C5H12 or C6H14 are able to give optical isomerism. So, how many carbon should uh, uh, alkane has in order to exhibit optical isomerism? We'll continue on our next lessons. Thank you.